It sounds good in theory. Treat pastures and rangeland for weeds and brush and you'll grow more grass that cattle prefer. But Kevin Bradley doesn't take claims like that at face value. Bradley is an extension weed specialist and associate professor of plant sciences at the University of Missouri. He set out to prove whether or not herbicide treatments would change pastures enough to influence cattle grazing preference. He decided to let the cattle vote. I would walk out into a lot of pastures in Missouri with producers and see a lot of weeds and feel that we needed more pastures to be treated. And we would ask the grower if we could go into their continuously grazed paddock, put on a herbicide treatment for their weeds across half of that paddock. There was no internal fencing. The cattle had to have a choice. But really the collars are the important piece of the work. They have an uh, indicator that tells us whether the cows are actually grazing or not, and that's critical. It's a head up down indicator. It tells you how many degrees their head is up or down. Of course, the only reason a cow really puts his head past a certain angle is to graze. Almost always their first response is going to be, well, I don't want to remove my clovers or my legumes. Okay, we're removing the weeds, and when we do that, we're going to remove the legumes. And is that that important to the cattle? Let's take a look at Bradley's results. This is a satellite photo of the study pasture. Cattle are free to move about. Here are the fixed points recorded by the GPS collars and up-down indicators before any herbicide has been applied. Yellow dots mark grazing activity in the part of the pasture that will be treated with herbicides. Blue dots mark activity in the part that will remain untreated. At this point, prior to weed control, cattle are grazing equally over the entire pasture. One month after application, cows are still grazing over the whole pasture in both treated and untreated areas. But two months after application, about three-fourths of the grazing activity is in the treated area. Cattle are beginning to vote. Here's what the two halves of the pasture look like. Treated on the left, untreated on the right. Close up, you can see that the untreated area consists of weeds, grasses, and clover. But three-fourths of the cattle clearly prefer to graze on the grass alone. This reading was taken three months after application, and cattle are grazing in the treated area 84% of the time. It could be a landslide victory for herbicide treatment. At four months, they're grazing in the treated area 73% of the time. This last shot includes all the fixed points taken during the study. The final vote is in. Clearly, cattle prefer to graze on the area that has been treated with herbicide. In fact, of the total time spent grazing in this pasture, almost three-fourths of it was spent in the half treated with herbicide. By two months after treatment on into three and four months after treatment, in all cases, we're changing their behavior. The cattle are starting to move towards the treated side. In a lot of our sites uh, on the uh, untreated side, where we didn't spray a herbicide, the weed component of that total yield would be 50% or more. The amount of seed that those ragweeds are producing back on the acre and how much longer that's gonna be a problem and how that ragweed will eventually just take over that acre uh, our results are showing this is, is not only impactful for what you're going to see from years to come in your pasture, it's impactful from what grazing you're getting right now. Maybe the cattle are onto something. The pastures in this study were treated with herbicides from Dow AgroSciences. Check out the broad portfolio of range and pasture herbicides from Dow AgroSciences, which includes Chaparral, Forefront HL, and Graze on Next HL. They provide superior weed and brush control to help you grow more grass and satisfy more cattle.